Hello everyone, welcome back to The Football Shirt Show, the channel that keeps you up to date with the latest and greatest football shirts. And I'm here today to bring you a brand new episode on the series on this channel around the ground. Today we're here outside the Morris Rareback Stadium, home to Wingate and Finchley Football Club, where they will be taking on Corinthians Casuals in about an hour's time or so. But before we do watch the match, let's take a look around the ground and let's take a look at the club. Wingate and Finchley FC is a football club founded in 1991 after the merging of Wingate FC and Finchley FC. Finchley FC was formed in 1847, making it one of the oldest clubs in the country, while Wingate FC was formed in 1947 as a way to battle ignorance towards racism aimed at Jewish people. In 1991, with Finchley struggling in the Isthmian League 2nd Division and with mounting debts, it was announced that a merger with Wingate would take place in the summer. After extensive refurbishment, Wingate and Finchley took to the pitch for the first time in the 1991-92 season. Success was immediate and the club is quickly becoming one of the most progressive non-league clubs in the area due to a focus on youth development. Silverware was won and the team was doing great. They currently play in the Isthmian League Premier and so far this season are sat in 13th place but with only two games being played so far, everything of course is still a possibility. Like I said, today they're taking on Corinthian Casuals who are right now sat in 20th place. Their current first team manager is Mark Weatherstone, a club legend with hundreds of appearances under his name. He'll be joining me later after the game. Wingate and Finchley also have their own ultras group. One of the members, Chris, told me some more. Hi, my name is Chris. I'm a Wingate and Finchley supporter of about four years, but I've been attending a few matches before. I made the group the Blue Army Ultras just for, with some friends for a bit of fun. As a kid, to be honest, I supported Man United, but I felt like with Wingate and Finchley, you kind of belonged part of something. The club appreciate you. Like I've sort of got like a personal connection with what's going on on the pitch. Whilst at a Premier League game, I wouldn't have that sort of connection. It's a great thing to do with friends to go to Wingate. Uh, the other fans they're very friendly. I think you guys should uh, give your local non-league club a try out because they'd appreciate your support. Wingate and Finchley play their home games here at the Morris Rayback Stadium, which has a capacity of one thousand five hundred, which includes five hundred seats. The ground was previously called Summer Lane and the Harry Abraham Stadium, but is now named after Wingate and Finchley co-founder Morris, who sadly passed away aged 95 in 2016. There's a lovely bar and the dressing room looks great. The main stand is connected to a stand for a rugby pitch next door and it's actually Grade 2 listed. Club director Paul told us some more. Uh, so when was this stadium built? Uh, it was built in the 30s, I think 1931, and it was at the time, it was the third... Um, built a cantilever stand made of stone and it's the first two are not standing anymore so it's the oldest one that's still wow. still standing of its type and it's grade two listed now so you can't do much with it can't do much with it no. <laughs> okay <laughs> it's a lovely building it's very much of this period isn't it yeah it's very unique art deco yeah. uh, wonderful style and yeah we get a lot of visitors uh, who come just to see the stand and then obviously hopefully watch a good game of football The players came out onto the pitch and after a delayed start due to a faulty sprinkler, the game kicked off. And just 14 minutes in, Mafula slotted the ball down the keeper's left, putting the visitors... Casuals, number nine, and just 14 minutes later, he got his second of the game, Coolly sliding the ball home. And that was all for the first 45. I got a cheeseburger. It was very tasty. Eventually, the players were back out on the pitch, ready to kick off the second half. In the 56th minute, after a great ball was whipped into the box, Sayud headed home, pulling one back for Wingate and Finchley. Oh! 
And finally, in the dying moments of the game, both the Braithwaite rolled the ball into the back of the net after a Laraba shot was saved. And that was all. Full time Wingate and Finchley 2, Corinthian Casuals 2. Joining me now is Mark Weatherstone, manager of Fungate and Finchley. So how long have you been at the club and what does it mean to you? Um, so I've had two spells at the club. Um, as a player, I was here for 10 years. Um, I was the record holder and then, then uh, Armit Rifat was obviously, he's here for long, long and he overtook me. So I'm second um, appearance holder here. So long time, part of the club, part of the furniture. And I've only taken over as manager this year. Yeah, so the second spell has been a lot shorter than the, the, the first one, but hopefully as manager I'll be here as long as the player was. Yeah, definitely. And what it actually inspired you to come back to make a return? Uh, to be fair, in, in my head I was always looking, I always wanted to be a manager going forward, and it's a club I know and love, um, so it was always in my back of my mind to be one day manager's club. Um, and then when the chairman uh, phoned, it, it was a, a no-brainer for me, you know, and uh, I did have to stop my football and my playing days early. I mean, I can still, I'm registered to play, but I doubt I will be, so I, I, I sort of hung my boots up, semi-half half, um, hung my boots up. But um, no, I mean, I, I couldn't um, miss out on this opportunity, so um, yeah, once the chairman phoned, it was a no-brainer. Well, you say you've been here as a player for 10 years, or was here as a player for 10 years. What was your best experience? What was your stand-up moment? I think uh, we won we won promotion from the league below. Uh, we won a treble, two cups and all, and uh, we're going back uh, a good six, seven years ago. Uh, but that was my stand-up as a player, where you, uh, you win the playoff final, you win two cups. Um, there's no better feeling than winning. Um, so, yeah, it's many, many years ago now, but... Um, yeah, get a promotion for, from the league below to the run premiers. And you say it was many years ago. Do you think much has changed in or at Wingate and Finchley since then? It's a great question. Um, I think we've grown in stature. I think people uh, put a little bit more respect on our name. Um, but no, I still, it's still that it's still got that family feel, got that, that community feel. Um, that's what we, we wanted to sort of bring back a little bit more as, as me and Armit took over as, as management here. Um, and we feel like it's going that way. But it's a great, great question. Um, no, I wouldn't say it's changed that much, apart from, uh, like I say, the, the respect on my name. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I saw some of the fans over there with the drums and everything. So it does have a really nice community feel to it. Yeah, I mean, we haven't got a massive fan base. It's hard when you've got Barnet, Tottenham, Arsenal around yeah. the corner. Um, but the fans we do have, they're, they're loyal to go home and away with us. They make as much noise as they can um, with that drum. But um, no, fair play to them. They, you can always hear them for sure. But in their in their low numbers, just trying to trying to pick up more fans and trying to showcase what we can do on the pitch. It what didn't happen today, but uh, we're, we're quite a good passing team. Um, so we're trying to play entertaining football for the fans to come over here. Definitely. Now at half time, of course, you were unfortunately losing. What did you say to the team to make them come back out here and complete that comeback? I don't feel like to say too much on 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 the, on the camera, um, but <laughs> they got they basically got they got a rocket yeah. um, up the backside to put it nicely. Uh, and they deserved it. It was a very bad first 45 minute display. Everything we asked, they, they didn't do. Um, but we got the reaction from them, changed the shape slightly, and um, they gave us a little bit of reaction. The second half still wasn't good, still wasn't as, as, as a standard as we wanted, um, but it was better. Um, we got our two goals, and then we, we could have actually won it um, in the end. But um, it's a, there's a point it, it, after the first half, it's a point game in the end, I would say. Um, so we, we go again Monday. So what skills do you think you need to be a good manager and how much does it differ from being a player? Don't ask me, I don't know. <laughs> no, um, so to be fair, I've always, for me as a player, I was, I was a captain of the team and I was always a leader, I was always vocal. 
uh, I think as a manager, you need to be. The main thing for me is you need to manage players. Mm. Everyone has different characters in, it, in the change room, uh, from different ways, shapes, and form in life, and different upbringings, etc. So you've got to be able to manage individuals, um, and I think that's the key thing for, for, for management uh, is knowing when when to sort of tell someone off if you like, or whether to put an arm around their shoulder. Um, just manage different characters, and I think that's the the hardest uh, thing you can be as a manager, as a player. You don't need to manage the play, you just need to, you need to make sure you're leading by example um, and trying to do things right. And then you can sort of, again, rocket their backside no matter what. They're, they're, it's not your job as a captain to find out people's backgrounds. So as a, I think that's a different transition from, from player to manager is, is really understanding people's personalities, their characters to get the best out of them. Um, so that, that's, I think, is the, the biggest step up from a player to a manager. And as a player, you won't used to be a player, of course. Do you think that's influenced how you would manage a team usually? Yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, everyone, again, you, you, you naturally you, you gain respect as a captain and then you've got to look after that respect. And, and I, feel, I feel like the, I led by example. I was a, a talker, I was a strong, I was a winner. And I think it, it, it spread around the team what sort of character I was. And I think uh, I had the players following me in that way. So um, it was a natural progression for me to go from, from a, a captain leader on the pitch to, to a manager. Um, so I think that's a natural progression for me. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I think that was a, it's quite an easy transition. But I, I'm a manager in the job I do outside of football, which again, I manage men, so it, it helps in adults and it helps uh, transition into the football side of things as well because you still, we've got men playing football, so you just got to manage the men. Um, and at the minute, it seems to be going fairly well. 100%. Now, you mentioned to me that you are an Arsenal fan, of course, at the time of recording. We've just lost 5 0, I believe, to yeah. Manchester City. As a manager, what do you think about Arteta? Should he stay? Should he go? It's, it's, it's that million dollar question, isn't it, really? Um, me as an Arsenal fan, I am probably a bit, a bit very negative because uh, I've been around Arsenal for, for a long time and I've been in the days where we had, um, we're had winning things constantly every year, uh, the invincible seasons, the, the Omri's and it's hard to see where we are now as, as a club. Um, so I'm always on the negative side, yeah, Arteta's not good enough. Did he come with the right amount of experience? Probably not. He was a, a good player for us when he played, for, um, but I don't think that necessarily needs, means he needs to be a manager. So you need to give a manager's time. You have to give managers time. And I think you've got to give Arteta a bit of time, but I don't see enough to know that he can get us out of this, this, uh, this hole we're in. Um, so I probably would jump ship. there we go that does about wrap up today's video here at Wingate and Finchley FC of course I would like to give a massive thank you to Mark the manager for agreeing to speak with me and Paul the director for agreeing to sort everything out and I can definitely say that I will be visiting here again it was a great day out and I recommend that you come too but there we go like I said that's the end of the video please make sure to like subscribe share and comment and I'll see you in the next one bye